All right, we're all here for some mad science, right? Yeah. Perfect. Well, my name is Laboratory Lauren. I'm from Mad Science. And has anyone ever been to a mad science show before? No. Was it last year? No. What about raise your hand if you've been to a birthday party? A mad science birthday party specifically. <laughs> all right, well, we bring science education to all over the Chicagoland area, all over the north suburbs. We do chemistry, physics, every kind of science you can possibly think of, we do it. And we bring it to parks, schools, libraries, village halls, anywhere we can do science because science is all around us all the time. So if we know how to look for it, we can find science around us. So I have three very quick rules. They take no, no time. I'm not wearing a watch. I was going to say they take 30 seconds. These rules are the very first rule is I am loud, but you guys together are louder, which means if I ask a question, what are we going to do to raise your hand or to tell me you have an answer? We're going to raise our hands, right? That being said, if I just like school, but this is not school. So sometimes if I ask a question to the whole group, I'm going to say, hey, mad scientist, what's your favorite color? And you guys would all answer. Let's try that again. If I ask a question to the whole group and I say, like, hey, mad scientists, what's your favorite color? You guys would all answer. <laughs> Love that. That is so much better. Perfect. Rule number two is there's a lot of hand on interaction with this show. But we're going to wait for instructions until we do anything so we can all do everything safely. I've gone through extensive mad science training to know how to do this all safely. So we're going to make sure we do it all right. And rule number three is it is a Saturday afternoon and we are here to have fun. So can we all have fun? Yes. yes. All right, mad scientists. I know you had me here to be a scientist, but I'm also kind of working on my magic show. Do you guys mind if I try a magic trick real quick? All right, I need a volunteer. Who wants to be the first volunteer? Come on up. All right, my friend, reach into this magic bag and then turn around and face your friends. Pull out whatever you find. What did you find? Tell the group. A rope. How many ropes? Two. And what is in the middle of them? A knot. Can you untie it? Hopefully. There we go. So we now have two ropes that are untied, correct? Yeah. Get all the knots out of them. Show everyone the two ropes. Anyone think that they're tied together still? No. Of course not. Pop them in the magic bag. In the bag. All right, take a seat, please. Scientists, I'm a scientist, not a magician. But let's see if I can make this work. I do need a magic word, though. And I'm going to try and make these, ma these uh, ropes tied. Do we think I can do it? Yeah. I need a magic word. Who has a good magic word? Yes. Abracadabra. Abracadabra is a perfect magic word. Ready? Can we all say it with me on the count of three? One, two, three. Abracadabra. Are these two ropes now tied? These two ropes are now tied. I did it. <laughs> Get it? That one's for the adults. All right, mad scientists, are we all warmed up? Yeah. That is proof why I'm a scientist and not a magician, because that is the worst joke I know. Actually, I might know a few other bad ones. But we are here <laughs> to do, they are tied, I know. It's a bad joke. But we are here to do science. So let's start by going way, way back and talking about a scientist named um, Otto Magdeburg. And Dr. Magdeburg did a lot of science experiments with vacuum. So who knows what a vacuum is? Who knows what a vacuum is? Kids, when you clean the floor for your parents, what do you use? A vacuum cleaner. And what does that do? It sucks up all the dirt. So we are going to use something called a vacuum pump to do our next couple experiments. So what is currently in my bottle right now? It is not full of Coke or Pepsi. What's full of it? What is it full of? Air. Some of you are saying nothing. Raise your hand if you think it's nothing. Raise your hand if you think it's air. It's air. I told you guys science was all around you. I'm not going to have an empty bottle. That's not very fun. So if we wanted to say get all the air out of it, how would I do it? I'd do this, right? But I would get really, really tired. So let's put some air back in. Let's try and do this mechanically. So I have a vacuum pump. This pump makes a noise. And it kind of pulls air. So if we were to say, do something like this, put it on there, see if we can make this work. See if we can get it to pull the air out. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to take a minute. It's going very slowly. I don't know if we have time to wait. All right, it doesn't have a very good seal, but we know that it would squeeze the air out and the bottle would get wrinkly, right? But what were to happen if I did that 
with something a little more rigid than a bottle. So some of you may have noticed, I have toilet plungers. They're not to plunge the toilet. I don't have a side job as a janitor. We already established I don't have a side job as a magician. Being a scientist is enough. So what do plungers do? Also, I promise, these are clean plungers. What do plungers do besides in the bathroom? How do they work should be a better question. Yes, in the back. They stick to, they stick to things, right? So when you put it down in the toilet or on the floor or something, you are pushing all of the air out. So right now, when I put these two together, it is full of air, correct? And then if I were to do something crazy and push on them to push the air out, if I can get them lined up, there we go. They're gonna be stuck together. Now who is very strong? I need two very strong volunteers. You two, come on up. You guys are both strong? Yeah. All right. One of you grab one end, one grab the other. Don't pull yet, hold on, hold on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by pulling gently because I don't want anyone falling over backwards. Are we ready? Okay. So just one hand, one hand each. Give it a gentle tug. Are those coming apart? No. They're not coming apart? All right, make sure there's no air in there. Two hands. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You ready? Yes. Make sure you're not gonna fall backwards. Are you ready? Yes. One, two, three, pull. They're not coming apart. Okay, let go. Let go, let go, let go. So I don't understand why you guys couldn't get them apart. That was so easy. I must just be super strong. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Got to get them lined up. Squeeze all the air out. They do make a funny noise. All right, let's do it again. And before you guys pull, we know that inside of those two plungers, because I squeezed all the air out, is a vacuum, right? We took all the air out, but those rigid walls mean there's still some pressure in there, so there's still a vacuum. So give it a pull. Show that they're stuck together again. Don't pull, your, don't pull over. All I'm going to do is let a little bit of air in. Ready? One, two, three. And they just come apart like that. Should we do that one more time? Get all of our air out. Maybe. Maybe. Hold on, let go. We can't do it at that level. There we go. All right. And then we're going to let a little air in, and they just fall right apart. So it's not actually that I was that strong, although I am pretty strong, right? Do we all agree? Yes. All right, take a seat, guys. Thank you. So when we get rid of the air, all of the air that is all around us is a higher pressure than the air inside, which is a low pressure. So we can pull, and we can pull, and we can pull. But then all we have to do, and they pop apart really easy. So let's do another experiment with high pressure and low pressure. Pop that over here. So one way that we can create different areas of pressure is through moving air. So I can create moving air by doing this. But I would get really tired. My lungs would get tired, wouldn't make it. So another way to create moving air is with a hair dryer. Moving hair, moving air, moving hair and moving air. I need two more volunteers. You, uh, you already came up, right? If you've already come up, let's let someone else. So come on up, and my friend in the black shirt, come on up. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get through everyone, so do not worry. I need each of you to take a hair dryer. Stand and face your friends. Stand and face your friends. And we're gonna point those hair dryers up in the air. Turn it, turn it, turn it. There we go. All right, can you hold it like this? Your jobs are to hold our moving air machines. So let's point it straight up like that, okay? We're going to turn those on. They're going to create fast moving air. The air in the room, is it fast moving or slow moving? Fast. Well, this air is fast. The rest of the air, pretty slow. In fact, it's not really moving much at all other than, the, you know, the currents of air from us doing things like breathing. So we are going to see if we can make that fast moving air go to work for us. Are we ready? Let's turn this on. Hold that on. It's going to get a little loud. Good job. All right, fast moving air. Let's see. What are you guys both doing? Are you doing anything to make it float like that? No? What if you take your hair dryers and tip them a little bit like that? There you go. What if you tip yours a little bit this way? Oh, eventually you're going to reach a point where it's not going to tip anymore. So before we turn those on, let's think about what, what's happening. So those hair dryers are creating fast moving air. 
that fast moving air is balanced by the slow moving air. Now, what is keeping those ping pong balls from going all the way up to the ceiling? Yes? Gravity. The slow moving air above it? That's what's making it spin. What else? What did you just say? Gravity. Gravity. What's gravity, bud? It makes everything go down. Yeah. And if we didn't have gravity, everything would be floating away. Correct. We would be like the, the astronauts, right? We'd all be floating. It would be super cool. And in space, there's no gravity. In space, there is no gravity. But here, where we are on Earth, we do have gravity, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you ask. But that gravity is going to keep those balls from going all the way up to the ceiling. So we are going to try that again. So ready? Can you turn yours on? Uh-oh. Did yours come unplugged? Or did we blow a fuse? That's also possible. There we go. Turn yours on. Floating ping pong ball. Floating ping pong ball. All right. Try and tip them just a little bit. There you go. So if we tip it a little bit, we can get it. But what happens if we tip it too much? Oh, over every time. <laughs> All right, mad scientists. Thank you, gentlemen. Good work. Good use of physics. So mad scientists, moving air. Should we do some more experiments with some moving air? Who said no? That's a weird answer. All right, moving air. We talked about that we could move air by doing that. What about, anyone know what this is? Uh, what do you think microphone? it is? A microphone? It wouldn't work as a microphone because the end is covered, but that's a good point. Yeah, what do you think? Cone. An ice cream cone? Delicious. What do you, a drum? Does kind of look like a drum. Anyone else have a guess? Yes. A cone. A cone? You're not wrong. This is called a vortex generator. What, is it, uh, ugh. what it does? is it generates a vortex. Now, who knows what a vortex is? I love science-y words, by the way. Yes, my friend in the pink shirt. Uh, it's like, uh, big, like, black hole. Like a big black hole, like something spinning? Yeah. Yep. So a vortex is anything that spins. So if I do this, who sees the vortex? No one's raising their hand. Nobody can see the vortex coming out? Me. Yeah, I can't really see it either. But let's try and prove that it's there. So, we can prove that there's air coming out. Maybe. By seeing if we can blow out a candle. Because we all know, what's a good way to put out, blow out a candle? Blow on it. But these days, we don't really want to be spitting on our birthday cakes, so we can see a dance. But it's not enough air to put it out, unless I get real close. So we need to maybe find a way to make it bigger. I just want to make sure I'm not under the sprinklers. Usually I check that. We need to find a way to make that vortex and that air bigger. Ideas, yes. Use the bigger one. I think that's a great idea. This is a bigger vortex generator. This is a baby vortex generator. So this one, rather than drumming on it, this one actually has a thing that I can pull. On the inside is a rubber band. And this membrane at the back, this solid piece, it's going to fill up with air. And then when I let go, it's going to take all that air and push it out. Are you ready? Push it out. Who feels it? Anyone, anyone a little hot? Need, a, need to cool off a little? But here's the problem. We are still not seeing that swirling air, are we? Anyone seeing it? Can anyone see air? No. Well, what's a way that we can see air? Let's see, this may need another second. Oh, it's starting. One way that we can see air is with smoke. So I brought with me a smoke machine. Looks like it needs another second to warm up. But let's see if we can put the candle out and see if we can see any smoke patterns. Come on, Mr. Lighter. Don't make me look bad in front of my friends. It's child proof and scientist proof. Come on. There we go. Round of applause for that flame. It's trying real hard. <laughs> All right, mad scientists. Let's see if this air, this vortex is bigger. I think my smoke machine might be ready. So let's see. Ready? 
Now it's just a matter of aim. There we go. So we know there's air coming out, but we should prove it. So I brought with me my pet dragon, AKA a smoke machine. So this is perfectly safe smoke. This is the same smoke that they use in movies and TV shows. When we push that button, hopefully. We all saw smoke coming out of it a second ago, right? All right, well then I'm gonna let it heat up for just another second. Don't make me look bad, Mr. Dragon. All right, let's move on to a different experiment. Who's in, char in charge of reminding me to come back to this one when they see the smoke? All of you? Perfect, I like this plan. Now you're gonna do it? My dragon has some comedic timing. All right, let's see. Let's see if it'll spit out smoke on command. No? It does it when I don't press the button, but not when I do. That's interesting. All right, now it is putting some smoke out. There we go. We are filling the inside of this with smoke. Let's see. Not enough, though. All right, are you going to spit it out? I know you're warmed up. Not doing no, it's not. It's being a little temperamental. All right, we're gonna let it warm up, see if we can get a little bit more smoke out. If not, don't worry, I have plenty of others. But while we're on the topic of moving air, what about hot air? Air that's warmer and air that's colder. How, do they, how are they different? Yes? Like cold air is more dense than... Cold air is more dense, talk to me about that. So what does dense mean? How much mass? Sure. So cold air wants to sink to the ground. And you've probably all heard the term hot air rises, right? So we need to find a way to show that. Has anyone ever been in a hot air balloon? Really? Some of you? I have not. Maybe, maybe we've thought about being in a hot air balloon. I have not, but I really want to. And I asked the mad scientists, and they wouldn't let me bring a hot air balloon with me today because they told me it wasn't gonna fit in this room, which I think is ridiculous. I think we could have made it work. But I brought a different version of a hot air balloon. I brought the bag. A tiny one? Well, I brought a model of a hot air balloon. So scientists often use models because the stuff that we work on is just too big to really do. So we can't bring a hot air balloon here. But I have a dry cleaning bag. It's kind of like a hot air balloon, right? Right? A little? All right, <laughs> I need two more volunteers. Let's see. You two, come on up. I'm sorry, I have a really bad memory. So if I call the same person twice, not my fault. All right, what we are gonna do is you guys are in charge of holding this open. So you grab it like this. You grab it on this side. And we are gonna somehow fill it with hot air. How are we gonna fill it with hot air? Do you think the hair dryers would work? Yeah. I don't think those are hot enough, guys. I think we need something bigger. Do you have an idea? What if you use dragon? My dragon? He's still warming up. He's still not spitting out smoke for some reason. I don't know why. But let's use something different. You guys good there? What about a heat gun? So these are something that you use, a lot of times people use them in like, labs to heat things up. Sometimes people use them to like melt things, but I'm just gonna use mine to create some hot air. So this, unlike the hair dryer, the hair dryer puts out air, but not a ton of heat. This one puts out a lot of heat and only a little bit of air. So what we're gonna try to do is heat up all of the air that's in our hot air balloon and see if we can get it to take off. Now we don't have very high ceilings, but I feel pretty good that we can get it to go to the ceiling how do we feel? Think that's good? Yeah. All right, let's plug her in. All right, mad scientists, your job. Can you guys kneel down or sit down? Because we're gonna try and get as much space as we can. So we need to separate your hands a little bit. Just give me a big opening. So put your hand right over there. Good. All right, are we ready? Yeah. All right, let's turn this guy on. I have it on low. We're just gonna heat up all this air. Heat it up. Eventually, this bag will start to feel warm. Do you guys feel a little bit of warmth coming off? Mm -hmm. No, not yet. 
Well, it's not wanting to stand up yet, but let's see. Let's turn it on high. Let's get a really going. So now it stands up by itself. You guys feel it starting to lift up? Mm -hmm. Do you think I need to go longer or is it pulling it out of your hands? All right, ready? On the count of three, you are gonna both let go. Make sense? All right, one, two, three, let go. Up. Oh, is it gonna go to the ceiling? Oh, I think we have to do it again. All right, let's do it again. We need to go with superpower this time. All right, both hands. So mad scientists, you guys good there? We saw that air heat up. It went from an empty bag, it filled up with that air, and that warm air is gonna rise and swirl around and rise and rise and rise until eventually it takes off. Should we go on high power this time? The whole time? No one ever says no. I'm gonna try, we'll do this as many times as we need to. All right, high power. Filling up with air. Go, go, go. All right, oh. It's already a little warm this time. It's standing up. Do you think it needs more time still? Do you guys feel it pulling? Yeah. All right, let's give it another minute. It's coming towards me. All right. Ready? We're going to let go. One, two, three, let go. There we go. Uh-oh. Oh, I thought it was going to stay there. <laughs> nice catch. All right, mad scientists. Thank you, too. You guys are officially hot air balloon operators. You can put that on your resumes. So mad scientists, hot air rises. What does that mean for us in you know, the grand scheme of things? That means when, it's, when you're like in a room, it's gonna be colder at the floor, warmer at the ceiling, and those air currents are swirling. Let's see, let's all stand up real quick. Everyone up. We are gonna take a quick wiggle break. So that means I need everybody to shake your hands out. Shake your legs out. One at a time, two at a time, I don't know, maybe both. Arms and legs, go, 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 go. Okay, and sit down. Whew, I feel better. I feel better. Everyone needs a good wiggle break. And hydration break. So mad scientists, fast air, warm air. What we have not yet talked about is really fast air. We've talked about no air in the terms of a vacuum. We talked about kind of fast air. We talked about warm air, but we did not talk about really fast air. So let's see what we can do to get our really fast air machine. I brought a really fast air machine with me. Anyone know what this is? <laughs> Timing is everything, Dragon. All right, is it gonna work when I press the button now? Oh, maybe it is, let's see. Let's see if we can get it to fill with smoke. I don't know why this thing is working when I want it to work. It's filling, it's just filling really slowly. Let's see if we can get a, a vortex. I don't know what's wrong with you, Mr. Dragon. We're gonna let it keep warming up for the rest of the show. If we can do it, we can do it. If not, I think we need to go back to dragon school. How to train your dragon, right? That's a thing. <laughs> All right, so my really fast air moving machine. Who knows what this is? It is a leaf blower. It is like a super powered hair dryer. So we know that if we were to take a hair dryer, plug that guy back in, whoops. If we plug our hair dryer back in, I've unplugged it prematurely. We know that we can get the ping pong ball to float. What about if we have our very fast moving air machine? Oh, it will float to the ceiling. It'll float to the ceiling? Yeah. So we need to make a hypothesis or a scientific guess. 
Who thinks it's going to float to the ceiling? Who thinks it's not going to work at all? Who thinks it's going to do something different? Who has a different idea? What's your different idea? Halfway and then drop? It's a good guess. Any other guesses? Hypotheses? Yes. It'll just go all the way up and then you drop right away. Okay. Any other hypotheses? Raise your hand if you're just not sure what it's going to do. Yeah? Well, we're all scientists. We should probably test it out, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what scientists do. We make a hypothesis or a scientific guess and then we test it. So let's make sure this is off. Plug it in. Guys, my very high air moving machine, AKA leaf blower, is loud. If you don't like loud noises, now would be a great time to cover your ears, okay? I will give you a warning every time we turn it on. But let's see. All right. It is too much power. Let's try it one more time, ready? Drop it down the chute and start. I don't think that'll work because there's no guard on it like they're supposed to be. Ready? It's gonna be loud. It is just too much air for my little lightweight ping pong ball. You can unplug your ears. It'll be a minute before I turn it on again. What if we had something equally lightweight, but that we knew couldn't float away. So we know gravity pulls down on it, it goes everywhere, we know all that, we talked about all that. But what if I had something different? Something lightweight, but attached? Maybe something rolled up? Maybe something that, Wait. yeah, what do you think? Yeah. What's your idea? What if you put like, Something that the air can't go through. Yeah. So the air can't go through it. I like this. What's your idea? I have an idea. What if you put, what if you put that cone on there? I think the cone's too heavy. What's your idea, bud? Like sideways? That's a thought. But what if we tried something different? So to keep on the theme with the plungers I brought earlier, I also brought some toilet paper. Now toilet paper we know is pretty lightweight, right? It doesn't weigh very much. And if we had some air that moved across it, we could probably get it to spin, right? So who has not yet been a volunteer? Yeah, come on up. Are you okay with loud noises? because you're not gonna be able to cover your ears. Is that okay? All right, I'm gonna give you one of my very clean plungers to hold on to. Because what, ooh, what better? I'm just gonna throw everything on the floor today, apparently. What better thing to hold the toilet paper than a toilet plunger, right? I mean, it's right on theme. All right, my friend, turn and face your friends. Stand here, two hands. You got that? What we are gonna try to do, oops, let go. Let's do it that way instead. All right, now hold on, that way. There we go, oof, figured it out. We are gonna try to blow that air at the toilet paper and see if we can get it to unravel. Do we think it'll work? Yeah! All right, first we're gonna start with the hair dryer because we always gotta start small. And it came unplugged again, that's fun. Oh, no, I unplugged it. Limited outlet space today. There we go. All right. We can get it to flutter. Is that exciting? No. It's fluttering. But do we want more than a flutter? Yes. Of course we do. We can do it from a different angle. From a different angle? How about with a bigger power source? Yeah. yeah. All right. Remember, guys, it is going to get loud. Dragon, chill. Are we ready? <laughs> What do we think? Thank you. Good volunteering. That was very loud. 
Mad scientists, if there is toilet paper near you, please gather it up so that we can leave this place not a mess. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 exactly. Oh, I'll get that one later, don't worry. That just means I have really good aim. That Thank you. So hey, I have really good aim, guys. <laughs> Thank you. We will recycle this. Not in the way you think. Mad scientists. Oh, here, I'll take it. We don't need wads of toilet paper lying around. Gross, gross. Thank you. Anyone else have toilet paper by them except the one that's up on the projector? What a sentence. What a sentence. Thank you. All right, guys. Does anyone feel like they're under a lot of pressure right now? Because I do. But not the pressure you think. We're going to talk about pressure. So we talked about pressure in terms of a vacuum. But we didn't define what the word pressure means. Who knows what the word pressure means? There's a couple definitions. Someone I haven't called on. Yes, all the way in the back. What does pressure mean? You don't know? Does anyone else have a guess? Yeah. You're my, you're my definer. I love this. All right, tell me one. Pressure can mean pushing against something. Like Using anything, right? Yeah. So there's air pressure on us right now. There's actually 14 pounds of pressure on us right now per square inch. That's a lot. And What's the other definition? So you're putting a certain amount of pressure. All right, Dragon, one of these days I'm going to catch it when it's actually going. Are you going to work when I press the button? No. Nope. All right. I think we are giving up on my Dragon, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know why he's not working. I'll take him back to the lab and get him figured out. But I don't want him to just keep blowing smoke, because eventually we'll set off the smoke detectors. And we don't want that. But mad scientists, pressure. That smoke is putting me under a lot of pressure. So. Pressure also depends on size. So you guys all can meet my friend, Mr. Elephant. You might notice he's not a real elephant. I don't know if you all picked up on that, but he's not. But imagine he had a real elephant paw. And when he steps on you, it would hurt, right? This elephant walking around, and he would step on you with his big weight. But what about this fancy shoe? The tip of that shoe is very, very small, right? Which do you think would hurt more if it stepped on your arm? The elephant or the shoe? Raise your hand for the elephant. Raise your hand for the person wearing the shoe. All right, we're 50-50. I think they would hurt about the same because this elephant weighs a lot more, but his foot is so big that it spreads out that pressure. Whereas if you've ever been stepped on by a high-heeled shoe, ouch, really hurts. So pressure over a different um, area makes it less. So I have some Dixie cups. Cups right out of the bathroom, we all know. What are they made out of? Pa paper, these ones are paper, there are plastic ones as well. So. A paper cup does not hold very much weight, does it? No. I need another volunteer. Yep, come on up, buddy. All right, my friend. Can you please demonstrate stepping on that cup? Did it hold your weight? It held your weight? You held up? No, it smushed. So how many paper cups would it take to hold his weight? How many? 100. 100? Well, I didn't bring 100 but I brought a bunch. 50. Do we think that we can get his weight to be held up by just paper cups? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Why don't you set out those many in a little circle in front of you? Let's see, spread them out like a, like a couple inches between each one, I'll help you. I'll help you, make sure each one is just one. So let's start with like maybe 15, how's that sound? Man, you're arranging them so neatly, we need them more scattered, buddy. Does this seem like enough? All right. Raise your hand if this is enough cups to hold his weight. Do we need a few more? 
Let's do like three more. All right, that's, that's good. Whatever you have in your hand, set up the rest. All right, I think that's plenty. So I'll take those, oh, put out the last two, perfect. All right, I'm just gonna move them so they're a little bit rounder of a shape. So we are gonna try and spread out his weight across all of these cups. But I just noticed your feet are not the size of an elephant's foot. So how are you gonna possibly step on all of those cups at once? How are we gonna do it? Ideas, yes, idea. Use two. Use two? Two feet? I don't know if you can see this guy's feet. Even two feet is not enough. Put them closer together? We could. Or what if we use something in between? What's your idea, bud? Lay down? He could lay down, but I don't think, I don't think I have the balance to lay down on that many cups. I don't know about you. But what about this board? This board would spread out the weight across all of them. So let's see. You ready? Stand up. Grab the other side of this. We're going to lay it down very carefully on the cups. Are we right on the cups? All right, give me your hand. Step right onto the middle. So all of those cups, paper cups that each individually cannot hold his weight. What if I stand? What, what if you jump? What if you jump? Raise your hand if you want to see this boy jump. All right, hold on, give me your hand. Now jump. One more, I think you're gonna crush him. There you go, they're going. There we go. So, thank you very much. Here's the quest, here's the thing though. We now have a bunch of crushed cups and guess whose job it is to pick them all up? Yours. That's right, if you wanna do extra experiments, you have to help me clean up. All right, thank you. So mad scientists, we took his pressure and spread it out over 20-ish cups, and it held his weight. But why? He didn't gain weight when he jumped. So why did he suddenly be able to crush them when he jumped? Someone I haven't called on yet. Yes. Gravity? So gravity did pull down on him, but isn't gravity pulling on him when he's just standing? Did gravity get bigger when he jumped? Like, when I jump, does gravity get bigger? That'd be cool. What do you think? So he didn't actually get heavier. Oh, thank you. You can put him right in that garbage can. Thank you. Good cleaning, I approve. So gravity didn't get stronger, but his force actually combined with gravity. So it, gravity was pulling him down and it became his weight, but more because of that gravity. So he was able to crush them, which is unfortunate. But, you know, we got to do it. So when we spread out the pressure, the same pressure across this little half inch piece pushing down on you, that's going to crush a cup really quick. Whereas one elephant paw pushing down, it might be heavier, but it's also spread out a lot more. Any questions about that? Yeah, what's your question? I think my dragon needs a, needs a tune-up. I don't know what's going on with him, so we're gonna let him be. But I do have another fire experiment that's dragon related, how's that? Yay. Yeah? So my pet dragon is under the weather, we know that. But I brought, all right, leaf blower, you're going over there. Someone remind me that's there so I don't lose it later. Let's see if we can do another dragon themed experiment. So we all know, what do dragons breathe? Fire, of course we know that. So, come on candle. All right, in this container, I have dried dragon's breath. Do you think that's really what's in here? No, that would be crazy. This is a powder called lycopodium. It is actually made out of dried mushrooms. But has anyone seen a grain silo? Do you know what a grain silo is? Those really tall buildings at a farm that are full of grain. Now grain or flour or anything like that on its own doesn't really burn. But when it gets up in the air and is full of air, it can burn. So let's see what happens when we simulate that. Are we ready? What did we see? Fire. Fire. So it looked like a cloud of fire shot out. But what was it? I'm gonna do it again. 
I want you guys to look and see if you can see individual particles. Are we ready? Oh, come on. That one was big. Did anyone see what looked like a bunch of little polka dots of fire? So let's figure out why that was. You guys all saw it? Nice. So each of these grains individually, not super flammable, or not very easy to make them catch on fire. But when they all combine together, and the air in between them can also um, get in between them, we get what looks like a fireball. It's also what it looks like if you like eat a lot of chili peppers and then go to like blow out your candles on a cake, right? No, not really. All right, let's do that again. Let's do it a few, a few times because it's fun. <coughs> Who doesn't like a good fire experiment? I want one more big one. There we go. Whoa. Enough that it put the fire out. I guess that means I'm done with that experiment, huh? <laughs> You want fire? So you want another fire-based experiment? Yeah. Who has been to Australia? <laughs> anyone? No. no? You're raising your hand. Have you actually been there? No. Does anyone know what instrument they play in Australia? It's got a really funny name. Do you know it? Uh, the didgeridoo. Now, I have not been to Australia. I have tried to play the didgeridoo, though, and it is very hard to do. Because what it, you do with the didgeridoo, this is not a didgeridoo. This is a piece of tubing. But I'm not Australian, so they won't give me a real didgeridoo. And you'll see why. You play it by kind of blowing into it and across, and I can't make a noise out of it. But I have to use science to make a noise. So. When you hit it and it vibrates, it makes a noise. So we need to somehow make it vibrate a lot. Smack it against the ground. Smack it against the ground? Kind of like boom whackers that you've used at school? That makes a cool noise. But I'm a scientist and I'm here for more than that. So let's do, let's do it big. Is there a way that we can turn some of the lights off in here? Let's make it a little bit darker in here. I don't think it's gonna get super dark because of the windows, but hopefully you guys will still be able to see me. That's good. Are we still good? We can all see me still? Yeah. All right. So I have my didgeridoo. And I have this chemical called ethanol. And ethanol is very, very flammable, which means it catches on fire very easily. And I'm going to add just a little bit and give it a swirl because we don't want liquid ethanol. We want that eth ethanol to aerosolize or become a gas. So I am spinning it around. It will turn into a gas. And then we have a didgeridoo full of ethanol vapor. And then we're going to burn it. Do we think it's good? Let's pour out all the liquid. Doo -doo -doo. All right. Watch carefully. This happens quickly. Don't worry, I can do it a couple times. So that's how you get a didgeridoo noise if you can't actually play the didgeridoo. Someone tell me what they saw, because that happened fast. Yes, in the back, what did you see? It turned blue. Did anyone see the fire kind of go down and up? Yeah, I saw it turn blue. And you saw fire squirting out the top. That's why this experiment is called the flaming didgeridoo, because it is a didgeridoo on fire. Now, what do we say we do that again? Because usually that first time, everyone is so shocked that they like, can't really process what they saw. So I'm going to set this one aside. And we're going to grab another one. All right, so what do we have to do? We add a little bit of our ethanol. Lay hand on the top. Swirl it around. Swirl, 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 swirl. We want it all aerosolized because liquid ethanol does not burn as well as the gas form. So we need it to evaporate. So by me swirling like this, it's just making it evaporate faster. Feels evaporated. I don't think there's much liquid swirling around. All right, we ready? Remember guys, watch carefully. It does not take long. It's kind of fun, right? Down, so this time you saw it going down blue and up kind of that reddish orange. Who else saw that? Yeah? 
So each of these tubes is a slightly different size, which means it's going to look slightly different. You want to see it again, you say? Again? This is why I bring multiples, guys. All right. Flaming didgeridoo. Is this, the is this the biggest tube? I think they're all similar sized. You came just in time for the best experiment. It's like you knew. All right, so we are aerosolizing. Oops, we're also spilling it on my hand. That's fine. That's why I wear lab coats. Never trust a scientist's lab coat. It's always full of chemicals. All right, pour out our extra. See, I told you I'd put this extra toilet paper to good use. We ready? One, two, three. That one was weird. I think that's one that has a leak in it. I think we need to do one more. Oh, this one. Yeah, it only went down. I think it has a crack in it, so it let some of that out. All right, I didn't like that one. Let's do it again. All right, this is my last one, though, so hopefully this one works well. This one is smaller, so how do we think the noise is going to be different? It's going to be squeaky. Raise your hand if you think louder. Raise your hand if you think quieter. Raise your hand if you think it'll be the same. Raise your hand if you're just not sure. I love it. We are good scientists, so we need to test it. So let's do it. One, two, three. Why did it stay burning for a minute? It was faster, wasn't it? It was like one big whoosh, instead of like a whoosh. All right, can we turn those lights back on? Thank you. All right. Whoa, didgeridoo's rolling everywhere. All right. So we have looked at fire. We have looked at moving air. We have looked at heated up air. We have moved at fast air. We have looked at slow air. But let's use our really fast air moving machine, aka leaf blower, for one final experiment. What do we think? We're going to bring back two things that we have used before. The leaf blower. Thank you for reminding me, I did ask that. This first thing we're gonna bring back, we knew that we could distribute pressure. But what I did not also tell you is that the bottom of it has this weird thing on it. So the bottom of this has plastic on it. And that plastic you might notice has some holes on it. So let's drop it down. And we are gonna fill that bottom part with air. Now how do we do that? Of course, we use our friend the leaf blower. We pop it right in there. And we are going to see if we can distribute that air enough to float. Who has played air hockey before? Most of you have, right? That game with the puck? Yeah, sure. Or like David Busters or something like that. And you press that, you press that puck across, and it looks like it's floating. We are going to do that in human form. So I need a volunteer I have not yet called up here, who I have not yet called up. Green jacket, come on up. Are you okay with loud noises? Yeah. All right, can you sit cross-legged right on that Mad Science logo for me? All right, scooch this way a little bit, there we go. Now guys, remember, this is gonna get loud. We are gonna turn on the leaf blower. It is gonna force air down through all those holes. And if we're lucky, we will get a cloud of air under her. And let's see what it looks like. You ready? Yeah. All right. So before we move on, we need to figure out why that works. So if I try and pull you around right now, I can't do it. Why was it so easy to push her around once I turn on that air. Yes, why? The air was creating a cushion, right? So air has very little friction, which means it slides across the floor very easily. The bottom of this is plastic, so it's kind of slippery, but it's not so slippery that I can push it easily. But you ready for loud noise again? But as soon as we turn this on, She glides effortly 
across the floor. Now, I have enough time to do a couple more people. So go take your seat, please. I need like two more volunteers who have not yet been up here. If you've been up here, then no, we don't have time. You two in the back, come on up. All right. We're going to do it one at a time, though, OK? So cross-legged in the middle. Are we ready? Scoots towards the middle a little bit. Ready? You're good with loud noises? All right. <laughs> Tried to make you spin, didn't fully get there. <laughs> Perfect, go take your seat and let's do one more. Before I make her float, I want to thank you guys for inviting me for coming out here on a Saturday. But let's make one more person float. How does that sound? She's going to be my last one because we are out of time, guys. Are we ready? You want to float? I wish I had time for all of you, but thanks for inviting me, guys. All right. Great job.